Good morning. My name is Ken Sorensen, and I'm a retired high school and junior college history and English teacher. And, and so now to fill up all that extra spare time I've inherited, I get to go around to venues all over the valley and make historical presentations. And I'm so thankful to be here at Sunflower and to be able to share with you what we're going to be talking about today. And today's presentation is actually entitled The Events of June. And today I will be going through day to day, every day of the month of June, talking about what happened on that day throughout American or in many cases world history that uh, is very unique and, and helps make the month of June quite special. So let's begin. On June the 1st, 1967. That was a very interesting day. The Beatles album came out and it was just absolutely unbelievable to see Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And they went out and gathered stuff from everywhere imaginable, including Ma Madame Tussauds, have all kinds of background on that album cover. And it was just absolutely incredible. So it was, it was great music, but it was also very creative album cover. And, uh, it really helped solidify their reputation as unique, unique performers. On June the 1st, 1980, CNN made its first live broadcast, and that began 24-hour days, seven-day-a-week news. And it was, since that time, the world has been nonstop news, news immersed in, in news every, every, whenever we want it. And in some cases, that's very nice to know. And in other cases, it's overwhelming. It's genuinely overwhelming. On June 2nd, 1941, this was one of the saddest days in baseball and in American history. Because on this day, Lou Gehrig passed away. Lou Gehrig had been a genuine star for the prior 15 years of, with the New York Yankees. And in 1939, he stepped down because... He was no longer able to function. And they sent him to all kinds of medical testing. And finally, the, the Mayo Clinic analyzed and found a brand new disease that had never been diagnosed before. And it's always been called ALS. And that's the, the shortened version. But nobody ever even knows it as that. Everybody knows it as Lou Gehrig's disease. And it's the, the mind no longer has the ability to communicate with the physical part of the body. And, and so that your muscular function slows down and eventually stops and he could no longer even hold a pencil and he died at the age of 39 on this day in 1941. 1953 Queen Elizabeth was crowned as the new Queen of England 18 months after her father George VI had passed away. She had been functioning as the Queen up, up to that time but the official inauguration took place on June the 2nd 1953 and uh, that means that she has served as Queen through 13 American presidents, which is hard to even fathom. On June the 3rd, 1961, the picture of this man, this man's name is Clarence Gideon. This man was a very, uh, not a social example of anything. And he got arrested in Florida and he got put in jail and he they went through a sham of a trial. And somehow he was able to get a piece of paper and a pencil. And he wrote a letter to the Supreme Court. And with all the information the Supreme Court gets over the years and, and, and all that went through that, somehow somebody found his letter and read it and realized that he was making up a very good point. And that point was that everyone, when they walk into the courtroom, should have a legal representation even if they can't afford it. He is the reason that legal representation has been allowed since 18, 1961, and uh, what an incredible, incredible change that has made in our judicial system. Also, on this day, and it's interestingly enough, on this day in 1965, Ed White of the astronaut group was able to, in space, to go out and actually walk in space. That was huge, because nobody had ever done that before. And, and we had to make sure that that was going to be a possibility, and it could be done, and, and these are all steps that have to be taken that will culminate in what will happen on Ju July the 20th, 1969, with the first moon landing on the moon and walking around on the moon. But we had to establish that we could walk in space and be able to get outside the capsules and fix things if necessary. And he did all that. 
on June the 4th, 1940, that day was very, very interesting because that day began the evacuation at Dunkirk. And the Prime Minister of England let it be known that anybody that had a boat that would even float, please go across the channel and help bring across those all those soldiers that were retreating to get them out of harm's way. And there were over 375,000 soldiers that were brought back to England. It would have absolutely stopped the war and guaranteed Hitler would have won had Dunkirk not been as successful as it was. And two years later, America is by this time now in the war. And we hadn't been earlier, but now we are. And on June the 4th, 1942, the Battle of Midway took place. We had actually broken the Japanese code and we found out what they were doing and they could not break ours because we were using a code that was never broken. And that was the Navajo code talkers. And they had no idea we knew what they were going to do. And they and we faked an attack and they jumped and then we came right in behind them and, and destroyed three of their huge aircraft carriers. And, it, and that became the turning point in the Pacific Ocean. On June the 5th, 1783, for the first time in history, a hot air balloon is actually sent up into, into the sky. What would have been interesting, in addition to that, Ben Franklin was there and saw it. And it's one of those things where it really would be fun to go back in time and sit Mr. Franklin down and say, tell me what you thought about that. And, and why was that so special that you made a point of seeing that? Because he was part of our legal team in France and he was part of the audience. Also on June the 5th, 2010, was the passing of UCLA basketball coach, John Wooden. He is still the all-time winner in national championships of bas college basketball. And I love the quote because Mr. Wooden, among many wonderful quotes, said, do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. That's really important to remember, whether you're a basketball player or someone that's just normally walking the streets. That is an important thing to remember. And, and what good advice. On June the 6th, 1944, after struggling because weather was not cooperating, there was a lot of debate over when are we going to actually have the invasion that would result in D-Day. And it was finally decided we had to go on the 6th and everybody was keeping their fingers crossed and the weather finally broke on the 4th and 5th, and it was finally dry enough to actually have that invasion. And that began what had been called Operation Overlord, but hundreds of thousands of troops attacked, and it became the turning point of the war in Europe. 24 years later, in America, the winning candidate of the California Democratic primary in 1968 was then Senator Bobby Kennedy. And that night, as part of the celebration, he greeted all of his his supporters, and it was a wonderful moment. And then he was taken out of the hotel. He was going to be taken back up to his room. And rather than take him down through the crowd, they took him off the stage, back to the kitchen area to get to a service elevator to take him up. And unfortunately, one of the, the uh, cooks was a Palestinian, who was not impressed with Senator Kennedy's position on Palestine. And as Senator Kennedy and his group walked past, this man stepped out with a gun and shot Senator Kennedy. And he died 18 hours later. And uh, he's always going to be remembered, having, having died at the age of 43, he's always going to be being remembered as one of the what ifs, what could have been. And of course, we will never know. On June the 7th, 1665, in England, this is an incredible picture because the, the bubonic plague was going through. They knew that something was causing this, but nobody understood germs. Nobody understood hardly anything at all. And yet, when it was found out that someone was actually ill and it was identified very quickly, as you can see in the picture, what would happen is a lock would be put on the front door of the home and a big red cross would be painted on the front door of the home and no one was allowed to come and go for 40 days. And so if you thought our quarantine this year has been a little bit rough, you can imagine that. And it caused all kinds of uproar and everybody was just trying their best to survive. On June the 7th, 1975, John Denver's song, Thank God I'm a Country Boy, became a, the number one hit in America. 
And that was just a, a real good, feel-good piece of music. On June the 8th, 1789, this is kind of interesting because James Madison introduced what was then called the Congreves of the United States. And what that did was that morphs into what we call the Bill of Rights. And this is when they were first introduced. Originally, there were 12, and they were there was two of them that were combined in the other 10, and they became our Bill of Rights. But they were first introduced, and first the discussion first began in June the 8th in 1789. And they were adopted in December of 1791. And that is one of the main reasons why our country is what it is because of those Bill of Rights. On June the 8th, 1968, an idiot was found and arrested and taken off of a plane in London. The idiot had been the shooter that had killed two months prior Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And I say idiot without giving his name because in my world, and I agree, and please understand, I feel I'm very narrow-minded, but in my world, if someone tries to change history with the course of a gun, they don't deserve to have their name said. They really don't. And I'm sorry that our media doesn't understand that. I want to focus on what was lost and learn the value of what was lost, not some weirdo's agenda. I don't care. On June the 9th, 1870, on this day, a British author passed away at the age of 58, and his name was Charles Dickens. Fabulous storyteller. Really, really was, and a very interesting man. And if you look at the picture, you might also, as I do, want to give him the award for maybe ugliest beard ever. And uh, But anyway, quite a very interesting individual. On June the 9th, 1934, this is the first time that Donald Duck appeared in a cartoon, and it was called The Wise Little Hen. And if you look there on the picture... Donald Duck, it doesn't look anything like Donald Duck that we've come to know, but this is kind of an interesting introduction, and he was first introduced to the American public on this day in 1934. On June the 10th, 1845, that was a unique day. It really was, because just prior to that, former President Andrew Jackson had passed away, and so his funeral was held there at his home at the Hermitage, in Tennessee, and all kinds of people were invited, and many people came. And as they were walking in, it was interesting because they had a picture of him, of course, and then there was the family parrot. And that family parrot was on uh, this, they're on his stoop, and, and people started walking in, and he got excited and started to swear loudly. And it was so disturbing and so unusual, they finally had to take the parrot out away from the house and put him in the barn and put him in a cage in the barn so nobody could hear because he was just disturbing the whole gathering of a funeral of a president. And, and I've always thought that was more one of the more unusually interesting events that to ever took place. On June the 10th, 1922, this was the birth date of Judy Garland. And Judy Garland was an incredibly talented individual, could sing and dance and do all kinds of amazing things. She will be forever known, her iconic role as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. And she did incredibly well in that role and other movies too, but that's going to be the, her always her defining defining role. On June the 11th, 1910, this was the birthday of Jacques Cousteau. And this man was really quite interesting because he becomes one of the early spokesmen that makes people start to think about the importance of conserving national resources and international resources, literally, and, and started talking openly about clean air and clean water and what can we do to maintain that or achieve that and make the world a better place. And we're still trying to come to grips with that. And we're still trying to, to define that. And how can that be? And what can we do? And what kind of world do we want our children and our grandchildren to inherit? And the importance of all of that. On June the 11th, 1979, this is a sad day for many of us who had grown up firmly believing that this man and his movies were, were just the epitome of everything that was good about manhood. And John Wayne passed away 
on June the 11th, 1979. And many of his movies were just absolutely classics. McClintock and the, and the Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, Hondo, and Big Jake, and Chisholm, and, and wonderful, wonderful movies. His last movie was The Shootist. And wow, was that, that was just profound. On June the 12th, 1942, this is a sad day because in the country of Holland, Anne Frank and her family, who had been hiding, was found out. And the German army came and arrested them and took them in and put them in a prisoner of war camp. She was 12 years old, and she began keeping a diary. And that diary is, is one that most of us have ran into in, in middle school somewhere and had to read portions or all of the diary of Anne Frank. And for the next two and a half years, she kept that diary. And she passed away in the prisoner of war camp before she was 15. And how incredibly, incredibly sad. On June the 12th, 1962, a man was arrested in South Africa. That man's name was Nelson Mandela. He had been, he was an attorney. He had raised some social concerns about trying to improve the quality of life for various groups in South Africa, and he was jailed for that. He was in jail for 27 years, and because of incredible encouragement from the United States and many other countries. He was finally released from jail in 1990, and he began again trying to push against apartheid. What was interesting about his story is that de Klerk, who was the prime minister of South Africa, started working with him. They ended up running against each other for the presidency of South Africa in 1994, and Mandela was elected, and de Klerk in one of the classier moves ever, helped very smoothly in the transition. And it was such a wonderful change that de Klerk and Mandela were given the Nobel Prize for Peace in 1994. And what a wonderful, wonderful thing. Mandela has always been one of the truly great giants of our time. On June the 13th, 1920, after doing this for seven years, the United States Post Office came out and said, you can no longer send your children through the mail. <laughs> and yes, I'm trying to keep a straight face while I'm explaining this, but it had been a possibility. And, and now, as crazy as that sounds, what would happen is you would put stamps on your kid and, and then usually insure them, and they would be picked up and transported. Now, that, that really sounds almost horrific, but you also need to understand this was normally at a time where you're in very rural America and everybody knows their postman and they and their postman will take them to the train and the train will transport them and everybody knows everybody throughout the process and you have family members receiving the child and crazy deal it really was and in 1920 the the post the US postal service finally said we don't want to be involved with transporting kids anymore. Thank you. And they brought it to a stop. On June the 13th, 1927, the prior month, Lindbergh had flown from New York and landed in Paris, France. And this is the first time anyone had flown across the Atlantic Ocean. And Lindbergh became an international icon. And when he came home, this picture shows of how he was received in New York City, and, and the entire city just came to a standstill, and people came from everywhere to be, to be involved in that incredible parade of welcoming home Charles Lindbergh on June the 13th, 1927. On June 14th, 1811, a young lady was born, and she grew up and became Harriet Beecher Stowe. She became incredibly well-known because of the publication of her book in 1851 entitled Uncle Tom's Cabin. That book literally opened the eyes of the North, who were not paying a whole lot of attention to slavery and the emotional toll of slavery. And it was a big part of what brought about the slave issue to, to reach a point that resulted in the Civil War. And it, the Civil War very quickly became an issue of, we've got to stop slavery. And it, and it did because of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. But it had a great deal to do with 
her efforts in her book. On June the 14th, 1940, this is the day, the very sad day, that Germany opened the prisoner of war camp that became known as Auschwitz. Over 700 people were transported into Auschwitz on that day. And it was really hard because in America, we were in total denial. Germany was a very civilized, modern country. And who would believe that any modern country would do something like this. And certainly we didn't. And as we began to find out more and realize it really was true, it became even more horrifying because we had denied for such a long time. Also on June the 14th in 1775, the Second Constitutional Convention, or Congress, I'm sorry, established the official flag of the United States. Two years prior, on the same day, June 14, 1775, Congress established the United States Army. And so that's kind of an important thing to know that the Army's birthday and Flag Day, they have the same birthday. And the Army technically is two years older than our flag, and which is really kind of a very special thing to remember. And it, it, it's even important, more important because the next day, on June the 15th, 1775, George Washington gets appointed as Commander-in-Chief. And so uh, Congress was very much aware what we're going to have to do to give ourselves the possibility of maybe defeating England in the Revolutionary War. It was a great choice with George Washington because he was one of the few people in America that had actually led troops in battle and uh, was well known and highly respected and had integrity forever. And, it, and his whole life spoke well of all of that. On June the 15th, 1667, the first blood transfusion took place. And this actually took place, interestingly enough, in France. And a 15-year-old boy had his arm opened up and sheep blood was inserted into his arm. And the impressive thing about all this, the boy survived. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And you're going, oh my goodness sakes. And so it's, this has been around for a lot longer than most of us have ever had any idea. On June the 16th, 1884, Coney Island opened up and introduced roller coasters. Has that changed America? Well, and the world? Yes, of course it has. And we've got roller coasters everywhere and some incredible roller coasters that will go very high and come down very quickly. And But it all started on June the 16th, 1884 in New York City. On the June the 16th, 1977. Werner von Braun passed away at the age of 65 of pancreatic cancer. And that is really sad because he had been literally the father of modern American rocketry. And he helped get us into space. And virtually everything that took place in the late 1950s and all the decade of the 1960s and into the 1970s, he was pretty much in charge of and off the charts brilliant. It was really a sad, sad day in American history when he passed away. On June the 17th, 1631, a woman in India passed away from complications of childbirth. Her name was Mumtaz Mahal, and her husband was the Shah. He was so upset with the passing of his wife that he spent the next 20 years of his life building the tomb in remembrance of her, and it has become known as the Taj Mahal. What a beautiful building and what a beautiful tribute to the love of his life. On June the 17th, 1991, the body of former president Zachary Taylor was exhumed. And why? He had died in 1850, very unexpectedly. And some of the rumors had always been, what, was he poisoned? Was there arsenic poisoning involved? And finally, a researcher got enough supposed information and proof and got a court order and the body was exhumed and the casket was opened up and the body was put through all kinds of chemical, chemical analysis. And all of us have a minute bit of arsenic in us. And that's all the amount he had. And there was no trace of anything abnormal. And so all those people that have gone to all that trouble had to go back to the original story that he had died after being in the sun 
all day long. And then he came back in into the White House and had a bowl of warm cherries and milk. And somehow the milk apparently had curdled and that created acid that ended up killing him. And uh, it wasn't arsenic poisoning. On June the 18th, 1942, that was the birthday of a little boy in England who grew up and became one half of maybe one of the best musical writing teams ever. That was the birthday of Paul McCartney and his other, the other half of John Lennon. They became the driving force of the Beatles, and Paul McCartney is still creating incredible music. On June the 18th, 1948, Columbia Records came out with 33 and a third long to play records, those big old, old records that had gone out of, out of vogue and now are starting to come back. And so don't give all those old records away, hang on to them. But they came out for the first time in 1948. On June the 19th, 1829, this is kind of interesting because the Metropolitan Police Act of 1829 was created in London, England, and Home Secretary Robert Peel was behind this. And so a whole group of what we would essentially call policemen were hired, and the nickname was given to them Bobbies, short of, of his, his first name. They become the investigative force in England, and they have done an incredible job over, this, over the 200, almost 200 years now. And, uh, but they began on June the 19th, 1829. On June the 19th, 1910, a woman by the name of Sonora Smart Dodd helped create a holiday. And that holiday was in honor of her father, and it became Father's Day. And it first was celebrated in 1910 because of her efforts. In 1972, President Richard Nixon created an executive order that established Father's Day as a Sunday national holiday. And it's been a, a federal holiday ever since then. On June the 20th, 1920, DeForest Kelly, who is known as Bones, or Dr. Leonard McCoy in the Star Trek movies and, and the original television series, and then the movies, and he was always called Bones by the other guys. And... Captain Kirk, also Dr. Spock, but on this day in 1920, Dr. McCoy was born, and uh, he passed away in, of cancer in 1999. On June the 20th, 1975, the movie Jaws came out, and for those of you that are weaker heart and always wondered about what goes on underneath the ocean, don't go see the movie, but uh, very, very interesting movie about a resort town that struggled with a killer shark. On June the 21st, 1527, a man died in Italy. This man's name is Nicola Machiavelli. Machiavelli is primarily known for a little bitty book. And I mean little. It's, it's very, very thin. It's, it's less than, not even a half an inch thick. And that little book is known as The Prince. That book becomes the identifying factor that helps us understand modern political philosophy and political science. It is very eye-opening and very, very interesting. On June the 21st, 1788, the Constitution became the definitive gov document of our government because the state of, Mass of New Hampshire ratified it, and that became the ninth state that ratified it. And so we now had three-fourths, and so thou that we will be going forward under that document as our government. The document of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, those two documents are the number one reason why our country is still the best country in the world, and it is still the number one country where people from all over the world want to come here, both legally and illegally, because that those documents are the basis of who we are and what we are. On June the 22nd, 1633, the Catholic Church, with all its authority, came down hard on a man by the name of Galileo. Galileo was forced to recant or say, no, I made a mistake on something that he knew was true. The prior generation had included a scientist by the name of Copernicus who, in, who figured out that the sun is actually the center of our universe and, and planets rotate around it. 
Galileo came along a generation later and, and with telescopes figured it out and could prove it. And the Catholic Church said, no, that can't be true. Because in the Bible it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And in and so doing, creating the earth, that meant the earth is the center of the universe. And everything else is around it. Galileo said no. And the church just about went ballistic and threatened him with violence and death. And he finally recanted. And what is interesting is in October the 31st, 1991, the Vatican admitted we may have made a mistake about Galileo. And I've always thought that that was kind of interesting. On June the 27th, 1847, there was a cook, a 15-year-old boy above a, uh, he, he, was, he was part of a steamship, and he worked in the galley or the kitchen. He was part of the food prep. And on this day in 1847, he took a lump of dough and took his finger and punched a hole in the center and dropped it into a boiling vat of oil, creating the first donut. And he is known as the official donut creator on June the 22nd, 1847. So the next time you go and have donuts, send him a thank you note. On June the 23rd, 1868, this is the Scholes and Glidden typewriter that was actually patented. And it was the first typewriter that, was, that got a patent. And many of us grew up learning how to type on a typewriter. And, and what a wonderful thing. That is a great skill. That has always been. And, but this is a, quite an interesting picture of the first typewriter. On June the 23rd, 1917, one of the most unusual events in baseball history ever took place. This is so early in Babe Ruth's career. He's still with the Boston Red Sox, and he's still one of their star pitchers and a phenomenally great pitcher. In the first inning, he's pitching the first batter. He ends up walking, and Babe Ruth is so upset about a couple of the calls, he goes up to the, the umpire and starts screaming at the umpire, and the umpire gets upset and throws him out of the game. And Babe Ruth is so upset, he threw a punch at the umpire. He's lucky he didn't be suspended for the season. What is interesting is this, the, the other pitcher that is brought in, a man by the name of Ernie Shore, retires the next 26 batters in a row, and so it becomes technically a no-hitter, and Babe Ruth is only responsible for the first batter, and but it is a no-hitter, a combination no-hitter with two pitchers. One pitcher only pitched to one guy. The other pitcher pitched the rest of the game, and it was a no-hitter. And how bizarre, how absolutely bizarre. And that pitcher, and, and the, the, the showing of Babe Ruth is sitting next to Ernie Shore there, and you're going, oh, my goodness sakes. <laughs> what a crazy, crazy story. On June the 24th, 1853, President Franklin Pierce had sent his representative, a man by the name of James Gadsden, to Mexico. And there was dealings with Mexico, and we purchased more land. We had, because of the Mexican War in the prior decade, we had settled with them and gave them a bunch of money and got everything north of the Rio Grande Verde. Uh, Rio Grande River, I'm sorry. Now, we went back in 1853 and purchased the, the lower strip of Arizona and a portion of New Mexico. And so from there, the border of, of the continental United States is finally complete. And it happens on June the 24th, 1853. On June the 24th, 1992, Billy Joel, who by this time is an incredibly well-known singer, performer, his high school, Hickman High School, contacted him and he was given an honorary high school diploma on this day because he didn't finish high school. And it was thought it would be a good thing. On June the 25th, 1876, there was a battle in the out west. And this battle was a huge gathering of Sioux and Cheyenne Indians. And they were led, respectively, by Crazy Horse and Sitting Bull. And they were after General Custer, General George Armstrong Custer. And they met on a what became known on a battlefield that became known as Custer's Last Stand. And Custer and all his men were killed on June the 25th, 1876. On June the 25th, 1929, President Herbert Hoover signed into law 
the authorization to build what became known as Hoover Dam. The actual construction began in 1931 and it was completed in 1935. And if you've traveled in the West and gone in and out of Las Vegas, heading toward Arizona, you've gone over that incredibly beautiful dam and stop and go down on the tour. It is amazing. It really, really is. On June the 26th, 1284, there's a very interesting story that took place in the little town of Hamelin, Germany. There apparently was a Pied Piper, and that Pied Piper was brought into that little town because that town had been overrun with rats. And the Pied Piper said, I can get rid of the rats. And so he was hired at an exorbitant rate. He was hired. And he came in and blew his pipe. And he got rid of all the rats. And then when time to pay up came, they said, oh, well, the rats ran away and, and, and we don't want to pay you that much. And so he said, okay. And came back the next day with his pipe again and started playing. And all the children came. And he pipe piped the children right out of the town. And they never saw the children again. It's a very interesting story. It really, really is. And it's well told by British author Robert Browning. On the June the 26th, 1945, this is an interesting day. Because in San Francisco on this day, shortly after... Germany had signed off and ended the war in Germany on this day in 1945. The United Nations began in San Francisco, and it began with 50 nations, and that it is obviously much larger now, but, but it's an interesting day when it began. On June the 27th, 1950, President Truman announced that what's going to happen is America is going to support United Nations effort, and Truman authorized American troops into South Korea to help South Korea defend itself against North Korea. And that became known as the Korean War, even though technically war was never declared. And so the more correct term has always been the Korean conflict, uh, but lots of people died. And so conflict is kind of a, a whitewashing of the term. But it began on June the 27th, 1950. On June the 27th, 1990, a very interesting event took place because an author, Iranian author by the name of Salman Rushdie, donated $8,600 to the country of Iran because they had recently had an earthquake and he wanted to try and help undo all the damage. What is really unique about that is that the Iranian government had put a price on his head because one of his books called the Satanic Verses, they claim it was a inappropriate view of the Muslim prophet Muhammad. And he showed that he was still wanting to help. And so I thought that was always very ironic. On June the 28th, 1838, this is the inauguration day of Queen Victoria of England. And she served in that capacity as queen clear up until 1901 and long serving queen and she was the longest serving queen ever until elizabeth ii on june the 28th 1914 in the town of Sarajevo, austria this there was an assassination and an idiot jumped up onto the car that was carrying archduke ferdinand and his wife sophia and they were shot and killed that event was the singular tipping point that really began World War I. And everybody demanded, well, you, we need to have help here and support, and, and we're going to declare war if you don't, and back and forth. And all of a sudden, countries all over started World War I. On June the 29th, 1953, the Federal Highway Act was authorizing it went into effect and it authorized the construction of 42,500 freeway miles across America. And that's what's interesting to see this map. And we've had one of the best transportation systems ever because you can literally travel all over the place across country. And, and it's, it's extremely helpful in any kind of a transportation. On June the 29th, 2007, the first Apple iPhone went on sale. Now, now that, isn't that interesting? Because that's almost only 14 years ago. And yet now everyone has iPhones. And, and we all just virtually live on our iPhones. And all the information of our life is functioning on this little bitty box about this big. 
and and we're we we don't feel we're fully clothed and, and unless we have our iPhone with us and it's just absolutely insane and it's only 14 years old on June the 30th 1906 Congress passed the Meat Inspection Act and the Food and Drug Act and what that did was create national standards of cleanliness in meat production and and, and virtually all uh, food production it was primarily a reaction to the book, The Jungle, by Upton Sinclair. That book goes in and examines the meatpacking industry in Chicago, and it horrified America. Because if, if, it's, if half of that was true, what are we eating here? And, and because of that book, Congress ended up passing these laws, and we now have nowhere near the concern about the cleanliness of food, that, and because of that act on this day in 1906. On June the 30th, 1953, the first Chevy Corvette came out. And there's a picture of the first one coming off the production line and showing that, uh, that first Corvette. On June the 30th, 1936, Margaret Mitchell's book, Gone with the Wind, was published. And within two years, they were making the movie. And that not only helped further the career of Clark Gable, but also established the career of Vivian Leigh. And incredible, incredible story of what was happening during the Civil War. And Margaret Mitchell was was the author of all of this. And uh, that book was published on this day in 1936. What is interesting is the female character, Scarlett O'Hara, in that book, it's always been thought that the model for that character was the mother of Theodore Roosevelt. And Margaret Mitchell went to interview her before the book was ever done. June the 30th, 1938, the first issue of Action Comics was published, and this is the first time Superman appeared in comic book form. If you had one of those copies of that first Superman issue, you might be interested in knowing that in April of 2021, a very nice copy of that issue sold on an auction for $3.2 million. And you throw you threw away all your old comic books? That may not have been a really good idea, but what an interesting, interesting thing that now comic books and baseball cards and all kinds of things that we collected, Barbie dolls, Things that we collected over the years early in our lives are now worth a lot of money. And you're going, really? Why didn't we know that then? We would have taken care of them and preserved them. And, and now maybe we could have something of worth for them. <laughs> but what a crazy, crazy scenario. Ladies and gentlemen, the month of June was one of the more interesting, unusual months because of a variety of, of unique events. And these are just some of the events of that month. And I'm grateful for the opportunity of sharing with you history and stories of the month of June. Thank you very much and good day.